Good morning, Broadway. It is a pleasure to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to worship today. It is a special day because we have Bria, one of our Duke interns, who will be preaching. We also thank Greg O'Connor for writing our cover poem and sharing his gift with us this morning. And then lastly, we'll be having a special time where we will bless this new school year. We know it's an interesting time and people will be going back in different ways, some in person, uh, some virtually, but we wanted to go ahead and bless all of our students and teachers and school personnel uh, this morning in worship so they can begin the new year right. So let us now worship our great God together. Let's join together in a call to worship. Come, all who are hungry and thirsty, the Lord will provide for our needs. Come this day to the table of the Lord. Here we will find welcome and sustenance. Come to this time of gathering and praise. Lord, we come with open hearts and spirits to receive your gracious gift of love. Amen. As we enter into our worship spaces this morning, may we contend with the forces that seek to distract and to overwhelm us and supplant those unworthy forces with the power of peace and the embrace of freedom that we find in God's covering. As Giselle plays, we light a candle as a symbol of resistance to those unworthy forces and the acceptance of full liberation in the name of the Most Holy One. Please join us in the reading of Psalm 145. Giselle will play the response. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations.
Lord upholds all who are falling. And raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. To open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call. To all who call upon the Lord in truth. The Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful. And hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord preserves. All the wicked, the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Now it's time for the lesson from the contemporary church, because God didn't stop speaking when the book went to press. Good morning, Broadway. Hello, I'm Kathy Polarski. I'm the building supervisor here at Broadway United Methodist Church for about the last 12 years. I'm really glad I have this opportunity to be in front of you today. I miss all of you, and we will gather as soon as we are able. Gathering is really important to me during the start of the pandemic because I was not able to connect with folks. I took it upon myself to go on a card writing binge <laughs> and I had asked my wife, Amy, do you have some cards around? <laughs> and she unearthed quite a few and I went through the majority of those cards it was fun writing them and reaching out in ways that I had forgotten to do. Delivering masks, delivering Easter lilies. I did not want them to go to waste. Delivering red balloons at Pentecost, just any way in which to connect with people that is safe and meaningful. Uh, during this time, I have also had the opportunity to actually watch some um, old TV that I had missed starting the pandemic by binge watching Grace and Frankie really got me off to a good start. Laughter is so awesome. At the end of this, you will see a project that happens in our house every summer. As Amy and I raise and release monarchs, and just a reminder that the simplicity, whether it be nature or getting back to the card writing and reaching out to folks, simplicity is very meaningful and a very easy thing to share. And yes, things around here at the church have slowed down tremendously, though being here from the start has been very important just to make sure that everything was hand being taken care of. I also reached out to volunteers and have helped me out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Steps are painted the lawns being mowed, lots of ways in which folks are willing and able to step up. Thank you very much. I've also been able to check off some of those punch item lists. And everybody will be happy to know that all of the equipment in the kitchen is now all hooked up and ready to go, which has allowed our partner, Chef Paul, to resume his personal catering business. Other fantastic things that have been um, still happening here at the church, as we've been slowly allowing the work of community service individuals to happen. And it is the slow and the ease of having those folks here that have really allowed us 
to connect with them on some much deeper levels, which is really important. It is the service that is so secondary to that relationship, but it's the community that has really taken on a whole different level now. A story for me to share is that someone who was completing their community service was given community service. This has been seven years that he has tried to be released from the courts for something that happened so many years. And unfortunately, he kept getting new things added on for him to complete. So to hear that story from him and from him to have tears in his eyes when I was able to put that letter together for him that I, he felt like he was free and he was so appreciative. That is the ministry that happens in this place. Lawns get mowed. Folks begin new lives. And for that, I am so very thankful to share that with you, that even during this time, some really great things happen in and around this place. Thanks for listening. The beginning of a new school year is always filled with a little nervousness and an insecurity about what will come. This year, however, all of us are anxious about what is going to happen because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, national, state, and local education officials are reacting in different ways and with varying levels of precaution related to protecting the health of our students, teachers, administrators, and school support staff. Whether beginning soon or in a few weeks uh, with in-person classes or virtually, today we want to join together in this time of a special blessing of this new school year. We will offer this blessing to three uh, different groups. Uh, first, we'll offer it to teachers and professors at all levels from preschool up through college, including retired teachers. Second, we will bless school support staff including superintendents, principals, administrators, bus drivers, tutors, custodial and cafeteria workers, school nurses and counselors, educational instructional assistants, police resource officers, administrative assistants, and coaches. And then for our third group, we'd like to bless all of our preschool, uh, elementary, middle school, high school, college, and graduate school students. Well, when we do this live and in person, I ask these groups to stand up and then I ask the congregation to reach out and do something that we do at special times uh, in the life of the church and lay hands on each of these folks as a special sign of blessing. Well, since we're doing this virtually, we won't be able to do that as a group, but I would ask you if you're viewing uh, this together with a student, a teacher, administrator, school staff person, if you would lay hands on them where you are. And then if you don't have one of those folks present, just reach out and we'll trust that God will uh, bless us um, uh, powerfully together. So today in this virtual environment, um, we'll all participate in that way. So if you're a teacher or professor, active or retired from preschool up through college, please receive this blessing. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the people who have accepted your call to teach. Teaching is difficult work, and even more so in these unusual times. We pray for peace as they all navigate new ways of teaching, and for health and safety for those who will carry out this task in person. We pray that these teachers may receive the strength and support required to be their best day by day in their relationships with students, parents, and other school staff members. We ask that you bless them with wisdom, patience, and grace during this new school year and allow them to celebrate all of the little triumphs they see in their students each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
And now if you're a school support staff person, a superintendent, principal, administrative assistant, instructional assistant, administrator, bus driver, custodian, police resource officer, social worker, tutor, school nurse, counselor, cafeteria worker, or coach, please receive this blessing. Loving God, bless these school support staff people and let them feel your presence as they begin a new school year. We thank you for their leadership and devotion and ask that you continue to guide their decision-making with your Holy Spirit. Grant them patience, humility, and wisdom for the work ahead. And may that work enable students to experience a school environment, whether in person or online, where they can grow and learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now if you're a student uh, in preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school, college or graduate school, please receive this blessing. And I've got my daughter here with me today, so I'm going to lay hands on her as we do this blessing. Holy and loving God, as a new school year begins, bless each of these students, calm any anxieties they may be feeling and replace them with the joy of new possibilities. Fill them with wonder and a thirst for knowledge and allow them to reflect your light and love to all they meet especially be with them in these strange times and bless their relationships with their teachers, parents, coaches, and friends this year. Grant them strength and patience to adapt to unique learning environments and keep them safe and healthy as they learn and grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you to all of you who serve our community in education, including parents and grandparents who exemplify the love and determination and kindness that blesses our students each day. Genesis 32, 22, 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob, when the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose up upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Holy words, holy wisdom, all thanks to be to God. Hush, 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 hush. Somebody's calling me.
that I greet you from the wonderfully historic city of Montgomery, Alabama. In the spot where I stand, so many incredible sites where national history was made and remembered are visible. In front of me is a site where some of the last slaves were bought and sold in the state of Alabama. To my right is a marker that designates the spot of the bus stop where Mrs. Rosa Parks was arrested. On the spot that I stand is the city square fountain that marks the main square of life when Montgomery was first erected. And directly behind me, up Dexter Avenue, are the steps to the Alabama State Capitol, where 55 years ago, with the leadership of the beloved Senator John Lewis, the Selma to Montgomery March was finally completed. This half mile stretch from the fountain to the steps of the State Capitol contains way more history and memory than one could think a place could hold. And it is here in stretches like these and unlike these that history continues to be made. As our world and our nation grapples with the unprecedented and unfathomable devastation of COVID-19, it also grapples with the legacies that were made right here in these very locations. Legacies that are inundated with white supremacy, inequality, racism, paternalism, and much more. It is here that we find ourselves in a state of perpetual masking. Yet in so many ways, we find ourselves as a nation unmasked, uncovered, revealed, and naked. Our vulnerabilities and our shortcomings in areas of health disparities, div divisive, political partisanship, police brutality, and other forms of unjust ways of being have been placed at the forefront and in the midst of the chaos, we cry out to God. We long for an encounter with God that will definitively transform our lives and our situations. Under the cover of what seems like a perpetual night, we invoke the presence of God to step in and to do what needs to be done, to end this madness once and for all, and to make this thing new. As we explore our scripture reading for today, we discover that God will do some strange things under the cover of the night. Under the cover of the night, we encounter the supplanter, the one who takes by the heel. All these definitions of a man we've come to know as Jacob. In the word read for us today, we find our friend Jacob in his return journey to the land of his father. He has been told by the Lord that it's time to go. Jacob does not come by this departure so easily. The history of his deceit and trickery and dealing with his brother's birthright and blessing is fresh on his mind and makes the return to his homeland that much more unappealing. Afraid that he may encounter his enraged twin Esau, he's very meticulous about his actions and his movements. By now, Jacob has created all of these plans in order to appease his brother before their inevitable encounter. But this particular night, at a ford of the Jabbok River, something happens that Jacob does not expect. Now, at this point, nothing in Jacob's history indicates him being a fighter of any skill level. I think it's safe to assume that the WWE would not come and knock on his door. But in this story, 
we find Jacob wrestling with a man under the cover of the night. Throughout the tussle, it becomes apparent to the man that Jacob will not let go. Jacob is so determined to hold on that even when his hip socket is knocked out of place and the man pleads for him to let go because the day is breaking, he continues to hold on for dear life. And then we find out why Jacob is so unwilling to let go. Jacob understands that this man has something great to offer, so great that it is worth the pain and the struggle inflicted upon him. Jacob recognizes that on the other side of this encounter with the presence of God awaits a blessing. And so he receives this blessing in the form of a rebrand and a renaming. A new identity is forged for the one who has since birth been characterized by his own trickery and deceit. He is no longer called Jacob, the supplanter. He is now Israel, one who is striven with God and with humans and has prevailed. A strange thing happened under the cover of night that led to his newness at the break of day. There's so much peculiarity in this story that I'm not really sure how to speak about it. In reading through the entirety of Jacob's story, there's so many parts of me that want him to fail. He's been deceitful and he's lied on occasion in order to gain more and more for himself. He seems to have little regard for his family, pushing them ahead of himself into potentially dangerous situations. I just don't wanna like Jacob very much. Jacob's life is so messy, yet in the midst of the mess, of the mess, there is God. I find myself asking, why God? Why did you have to pick him? And then God gives me those mama eyes and I start to recognize my own humanity. You see, in my deep scrutiny of Jacob's character, I miss God at work. I miss God showing up in the darkness to ensure that Jacob would be transformed by the break of day. I miss this God who is no respecter of person or character, who did not require perfection or infallibility in order to be a change agent in her people. God heeded the determination the will and the fight it took from Jacob to hold on until God did what only God could do. As I stand here in this spot, I reflect on the strivings of the enslaved people who were forcibly marched here. And then I reflect on the strivings of the free people that voluntarily marched here over 340 years later. As these folks approached the river of freedom and liberation, they knew that something strange needed to happen under the cover of the night that would invite a newness for their beings at daybreak. And so here at the ford of the river of Jabbok, here at the ford of the river of freedom, they struggled tirelessly. Their bodies were broken, arms and legs tired from grappling for so long. Their minds were tormented as they didn't know when this perpetual night would end. But as they continued grasping onto the heel of God, marching and proclaiming that the promises of God to liberate her people and deliver a divine justice, to make them new creatures in the body of Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. They demanded that those promises were meant for them too. Despite who they had been named and branded before, despite what laws and decrees by the powers and principalities designated them as everything but children of God, despite a tireless effort of people that tried to attack and invalidate their faith that God could do a new thing, they held on demanding their blessing until day finally began to break. God unmasked and revealed the injustice of the systems at play 
while also striving to make them new. As they stepped into their own pineal, the sun shone on their faces. Yes, they were bruised and scarred, but they were also marked with a transformation of strength and newness that would be passed down to this generation of grapplers. They were this nation's witness to God's ability to do a great work of transformation in and through a people who did not tire, but instead held on. I stand here as a testament to the strivings of my ancestors who found themselves at rivers, who struggled for their freedoms and held on to God until they got their blessing. I stand here in the hopes that as we have once again approached a river, under the cover of this pandemic night, the daybreak of healing, of equality, of freedom and justice is on its way. Despite our histories, despite the legacies of this nation, God has invited us into a daybreak of newness. Let us strive with God and embrace the transformation on the other side. Amen. God, we invite you into our wrestling. Would you wrestle us into deeper conviction, more authentic worship? Would you wrestle us into having more faithful hearts? Wrestle away the worship that is only performance. We don't want that. But wrestle us into right relationship with you and with our neighbors. Wrestle us into a faithfulness that you are pleased with. Take this wrestling and make us better people. Make us more healed and whole so that we ref reflect the truth of who you are. Amen. As we come to this time of communion today, um, please gather up some elements that you might have around the house. If you have some bread and juice or if you have some crackers and water, that will work fine. Also, if you picked up any of the prepackaged elements this week at the church office, you can use those during this time together. Special thanks to Steffi, who baked our communion bread that we'll be using for the liturgy in the sanctuary today. Today, we will also be utilizing the Great Thanksgiving Black Lives Matter liturgy, which was written by Reverend Michael C. Johnson. We thank God for this important contribution. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Black lives matter to you and always have. Black lives matter. Black male lives matter. Black female lives matter. Black female trans lives matter. Black female trafficked lives matter. Black gay lives matter. Black uneducated as well as educated lives matter. Black poor as well as rich lives matter. Black homeless lives matter. Black Christians and non-Christians matter. Black lives with disabilities matter. Black immigrants and refugees matter. Black children matter. Black teens matter. Their lives are sacred. Their lives are valuable. Their lives are precious. Their lives are important. Their lives are necessary. Their lives are integral to your magnificent beloved family. So we join with them and all the others who are just as sacred, valuable, precious, important, necessary and integral to your plan of salvation to sing your praises. We join with all the angels and archangels, the great choir of saints before your throne, from every nation, from every culture, who speak every language, worshiping endlessly before your throne of grace, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, and so is your presence with us in Jesus Christ. Jesus was not white, 
Jesus did not speak English. Jesus was not a Christian. Jesus lived as the citizen of an occupied nation. Jesus was part of an oppressed people. Jesus was a refugee who found protection on the continent of Africa. Jesus experienced mob violence. Jesus experienced police brutality. Jesus was lynched. Jesus gave up his own divine privilege and chose to live as a slave and to live a life of service. These acts defined his greatness and defines our discipleship. Giving up his own divine privilege, Jesus took the bread used as a call to compassion for the oppressed. He gave thanks for it, broke it, and shared it with the whole community, saying, Take and eat. This is my broken body, freely given to you. Remember how this act defined his greatness and defines our discipleship. Giving up his own divine privilege, Jesus took the cup used as a call to hope for divine deliverance. He gave thanks for it and shared it with the whole community, saying, Drink from my cup, each of you. This is my blood that I shed to testify to God's eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's remember how this act defined his greatness and defines our discipleship. Christ's life mattered. Christ's abuse by religious authorities mattered. Christ's murder mattered. Christ's resurrection mattered. And so do our lives. And so we choose to follow Christ and choose to live according to this divine mystery. We now declare Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Life, meaning giver of sacred worth, caused these gifts of bread and wine to become for us the body and blood of Christ, the reason all of our lives matter. Life, meaning giver of sacred worth, caused the gifts of our lives to become for our neighbors, your church, the living presence and beloved bride of Christ, a reason for their lives to matter. Life meaning giver of sacred worth, touch the lives of any who feel that their lives don't matter, who feel they are not valued, who are treated with disrespect and fear that their precious lives will be thrown away. Change us so others might have hope change us so others might be valued change us so that no one will ever have to stand before their oppressors alone change us so christ's life will matter change us so the holy spirit's life will matter change us so our creator's life will matter and that we might be more fully and give them the honor glory and praise do their holy name today tomorrow and always. Amen. Now as those who recognize the value of the oppressed and abused, let us pray the prayer which Christ has taught us and who walks this path with them and with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now join together in receiving the body and blood of Christ. Christ's body broken for you blood of Christ shed for you. Christ's body broken for you, blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Thank you for sharing with us this holy mystery found in Jesus Christ. It has changed us, the way we think, the way we feel, what we understand, how we desire to live, and the value we see in the lives of others whom have been harmed through our sin of racism. Now send us out to demand that others be treated with the value they hold within your heart. May your love become more visible in us, that we not bring shame upon the name of Jesus, now or ever. Amen. Let's affirm our mission together. As followers of Jesus Christ, responding to God's love, 
Our mission as the people of Broadway Church is to be a multicultural Christian community that in its ministry seeks, welcomes, and values all people. As we leave this place of worship, let us go forth remembering the wrestling of Jacob and let us strive towards the daybreak of newness. In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.